Hi everyone, Haldbreak here. This is my solo walkthrough and guide to the level 20 heroic quest, The Dreaming Dark, on the Elite difficulty. Enjoy! Hi everyone, Warjack here. This quest is located on the Isle of Forgotten Dreams, and that is accessed through the Inspired Quarter right off the harbor. Keep in mind that if you want access to the Isle of Forgotten Dreams, you're going to have to do one flagging quest, which is the Eye of the Titan. After that, you'll still have to do two more flagging quests. One of them is Reclaiming Memories, and then you have an option of another two quests. One of them is a solo quest, known as Raiding the Giant's Vault. I actually made a video just for that quest. Please note that this is a level 20 heroic quest. It is the only level 20 heroic quest in DDO. There are two more level 20s that are heroic but they're raids, not quests. And there's plenty of level 20s that are epic, but this is the only level 20 heroic quest in DDO. Before we go any further, you can look down you see we're on top of a gigantic void. This entire quest is up in the air. So this is the much vaunted plane of nightmares. Unlike your previous dream experiences, it appears you are physically here. How long will it be? If you do fall, have no fear, you'll end up here. This place will always be the spawning location if you fall off. And you're, it's right next to the start. One of the key mechanics of this quest is heavy and light gravity. There will be spawning monsters who will cause heavy gravity, and once you kill them, you'll have light gravity. That's where you can go from place to place. This quest is full of platforming, so having a good jump will make everything much faster can skip more than just one step at a time. In this like urban area, we have to kill a whole bunch of spawns so we can move on when we get the light gravity. Uh, they spawn in a few at a time and you have to kill all of them before the next wave spawns. So sometimes they get lost or stuck so that's what you're looking for, just make sure you get all of them. Yeah, I've got one who got stuck. It's good to know that they can walk over the, like this air section, like between the platforms. But you can't, so. Don't try, you'll fall down and have to rerun from the start. At a certain point, there'll be, in port there'll be a portal that opens up next to that area, right at the beginning, where you spawn every time you fall, so you can jump quickly back in. Here's the here's an optional this quest. The tower to our right it has access to a special monster that drops a well it's a regular monster who has a chance of dropping a special item. It's known as Zakosian Ear Dweller. It's a really weird item that returns spell points. And I'm gonna show you how to get there. But first we'll have to find three keys. You can actually pick the locks, but I'm showing the location. So if you can't pick locks over this entire area, there's a lot of these platforms up in the air and have to do a lot of Mario jumping and eventually you'll find all three keys. We are in fixed location. So 
if you memorize the places, you don't have to go searching for them. You note about the light gravity. When the light gravity, you take a jump, it jumps up really fast. But then when you come down, you also come down kind of fast. So you might think you have time enough to make it to the next ledge, but you actually need to come flying down faster than you expect. You're not going to get hit or something by hitting the floor, but it's accelerated. The speed you go down is not the same speed you're used to from your typical feather falling. Like kind of like after the peak starts going down, then it just drops really fast. Okay, over to the side over here, there's this one floating head. This is where we're going to climb and get the second key. The three pillars over here, the one to the right is the shortest, and that's where we get the second one. I can just jump down right now and go and climb up next to the, the, the other platform, but you can actually make the jump from one to the other. Now I, ap I happen to have long jump, but I'm trying to show that you can get across without using any kind of special ability, just with your typical jump and, well I guess a bit of movement speed. Ooh, I almost missed that one. Here we go, this is the third key. Now we can go back to the that urban area over there and we'll get the optional. And I missed it. Oh, whatever. Okay, so here we're going to have to jump up on this little balcony, and this is where we're going to climb up to the pillar. I think you need to climb up at least on one of these heads. I guess you can climb to the second one if you want even more height, but you don't need it. I, maybe you should actually, never mind. I just have to wait. Here we go, it spawns three doors. Now, as I mentioned before, you can either just pick them if you got pick lock, or if you don't, well, that's what the keys are for. You can go collect them and you can open up all three doors. Once you've opened all three of them, they will spawn a big portal right above your head. You'll have to look up if you want to see it. And the way you access it is just by jumping. Boop, there you go. You find yourself standing before a secret cache of Mindsunders. It would be quite a blow to the Dreaming Dark if they were to One of the monsters over here has a chance of dropping the, the Zakosian Ear Dweller. So just make sure that if it does drop, you be quick and you kill it before it runs away. And also pick it up before it disappears. This is an optional area mainly for either the item or for, I guess, XP. You'll notice we're standing actually outside. If you look down, you can see those fountains. Those are the fountains that are next to the start. But we're just going to jump down to those fountains and continue our path back to where we were going before. I guess I should speed things up a bit. Okay, this is the main path.
I've fallen here a few times, so be careful. Dream crawlers drop from the bottom. Over here we've got these dream crawlers. They fall out of the trees. And there's a total of 15. And they spawn in packs of three. So there's five different spawning locations. So knowing where the spawning locations will help you when you inevitably don't find one of them because he went invisible and doesn't want to show up. At least you'll know where to look for him. And yeah, as you can see, this is a quest objective. Shows up on the right. In the objective box. Fun fact about this quest, when it came out, there was no epic destinies, there was no epic levels, so the level cap was 20. Right now I'm 22, so I'm technically at level, but I have epic destinies, and have epic levels, and a bunch of epic abilities that weren't there when this quest came out. It was much tougher back in the day. I'm just looking for one last guy. I think I just saw him. Whoops. Yeah. Right next to my spawning location is the portal that will take me right back to the market. But I totally forgot. And I'm going to pretend instead that I'm doing this on purpose just so I can show you the fastest way there. And you can see that it's really not that long. Especially if you can boost yourself. Ooh, that was close. Well, I guess we're back. I just still have to kill that one last dream crawler or whatever it's called. And then we can move on. Look at that. It came towards us. Here's where the players usually jump down, but if you do, you'll be hit with heavy gravity. And besides, there's an official way you're supposed to go, who's down these stairs. I'm calling it the official ways because there's actually extra kills who spawn here. But if you want those kills, you're going to have to go this way. Yeah, here's the heavy gravity. Here you can read the text. They talk about you, and if you did certain quests, they'll mention it that you've done certain abilities. I don't know what it is, maybe defeating the Storm Reaver or something else. There's two quests that change the dialogue. Out of all the monsters in the quest, all these are trash monsters, these are the scariest. They do charisma damage 
and uh, they can make you helpless. And if you become helpless with more than like one or two of them up, they'll inevitably just kill you because you have no way to protect against them. I mean, anytime you take stat damage, it rejuvenates very slowly, like one per minute or something like that. So I guess you can just jump down and go back to the start of the quest and wait it out or rest. Yeah, and if you're enjoying this video, please hit like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, the reason I'm telling you about those creatures is because the upcoming fight, you will have to fight a bunch of them, and they're all in ranged, so you better get prepared for it. My character has basically zero ability to do ranged anything more than just hitting levers, so I'm basically hoping that uh, the adrenaline overload kills these guys, because my DPS really isn't built for it. You should make sure you have restoration or at least less restora restoration when you come into this quest or you're simply not going to make it. You're going to be hit with stat damage and become helpless and uh, particularly the end fight. So, you've got some lesser restoration potions. The point is you don't need really high requirements but you need something. You need some kind of form to Restore stat damage. Okay, here we've got this gravity puzzle. When there's lines, that means that the gravity is going down. And when there's like these little small bubbles, you can see by the direction that they're going up. What happens is like there's a gust of wind that's going to blow you up into the ceiling. If you stand any other place other than underneath these half poles, you'll go up. And then when you come down, you'll come crashing down and you'll take damage or well, falling damage. And you can't, it's not protected by uh, feather form. Also, this section in the middle doesn't have any gravity on it, so you can just stand freely. So basically, the trick is you wait for it to show like the lines animation. That means that the air is going down. Then you just run to, well, the shaded parts on the floor. That's where the gravity is. And I'm stuck. Yeah, perfect timing. Well, at least I didn't take any damage. I mean, this is the way that's supposed to be done. I think the vast majority of players just ignore and just run because the falling damage isn't like critical. Everybody has so much hit points these days that you're not gonna die because of it. So what do you care? Also the gravity it stops once you defeat these three guys. So try to be quick about it because right now, well, you get slammed into the ceiling like this. Forty-three falling damage. No biggie. These dream weavers put this curse on you that prevents you from healing, so I need to remove curse to get rid of it. Yeah, oh well I'm gonna prepare for the last fight. Again, if you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe. And by the way, this is the last bit of footage of Quest gameplay for the Quick Stick build. This was recorded a few months ago already and was held in archive because the Dream Forge video wasn't ready. And I wanted to release them both around the same time. So yeah. Also, I'm really, I really like this effect over here. I can stand in it. It's kind of like a mirror. I don't know, I find it cool. Um, the reason I'm buffing so heavily right now is because this boss happens to be a purple name boss. Basically, he's a raid boss. 
and he can destroy you. So you should be ready for him. A psionic voice will touch more in your mind. Here is the King Forge you seek, mortal. But the most horrible of all the dreaming dark stands in your way. I am the Divine. Okay. The key mechanics of this fight are you've got your main boss and you've got these living nightmares. These living nightmares are oozes. That means they destroy your weapons. So you should have some kind of ooze beating weapon for them or do it with ranged or casting. And the second thing you need to know is damage reduction on this boss, I believe is good and crystal. So I've got this dream spitter who is literally designed for this quest. So everybody could use it because it's a quarter staff and it's got crystal and good on it, but for some reason I'm not passing, bypassing his damage reduction, so I really don't know what to tell you. Now these uh, living nightmares spawn at 75%, 50%, and 25% health of the main boss, but also they spawn like every three minutes, so if this boss fight goes on for really long, you'll have more. I've been in here and seen at least four, so if you take it really, really slow and you go forever, they just keep on spawning, so you want to finish it out quickly. And as you can see, I'm taking a lot of charisma damage and I have to be careful. I don't want to get become helpless. So. Also, you can avoid the stun if you're out of his range. I mean, for me, I'm being a melee standing right next to his face. I'm going to get stunned every time, but if you do it with the ranged build or caster, just, just stay away from him. You should be fine. That's it. Raise your eyes, you're about to get blinded. I've used that white screen for a thumbnail. I'm just kidding. I guess we can use this for a thumbnail though. Yeah, so that's it. Loot is standard, there's nothing special about the loot. It's just random level 20 stuff. And you get access to the Dreamforge. And anytime you want to access this Dreamforge, you're gonna have to run through this whole quest, but the difficulty doesn't make any difference. So feel free to step in on casual if you just want to get to the Dreamforge. And if you want to know more about the Dreamforge, as I mentioned before, there's a whole video just about the Dreamforge. And it's been posted already, so you can go check it out. Uh, it's Highly recommended because of the Ion Stones, who are level 5 trinkets that are very powerful. And you should definitely try to invest in a few of them. Returning this quest is kind of like all the rest of the quests in this chain where you have to go back to the a little tavern area yeah so every time you finish there's like a 50 percent chance that you'll get an iron stone and every third completion you are guaranteed 100 percent you'll get an iron stone and that's it well as always if you've benefited from this guide or if you've just enjoyed this video please hit like and subscribe thank you very much for wa for watching and I hope to see you all in a different video. Bye.